expression made by Peter when Jesus asked says, who do you think I am he said thou art the Christ the son of the living God now this expression son of God what does it mean you see this is not the time to debate but I will give you an explanation since it's a question otherwise I'm gonna ask you and we're gonna lengthen this meeting and we won't finish even till until 12 Son of God, what did it mean to the Jew? Did it mean that God begot a son? How many sons does God have? We are asking our Christian brethren, how many sons has he got? And you'll get the answer, one. I says, it's unfortunate you don't know your Bible. See, God, in the, in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 3 you read there the genealogy of Jesus and it says and Adam the son of God so was Adam the son of God he must be then Jesus Christ he said says all the good people as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God means every Tom Dick and Harry if you follow the will and plan of God he is a godly person in the language of the Jew he is a son of God then you read from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3, verse three it says, And the sons of God, sins from hot, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them to wife all that they chose. How many did he have? Many. And when the sons of God, chapter, verse 6, now chapter 6, came in unto the daughters of men and bore children to them, they became great men of old, men of renown. How many sons did he have? Many in the book of Exodus, God says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Jeremiah, he said, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Psalms, God speaks to David. He said, I will declare a decree unto thee that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. 
Sir, in the language of the Jew, in the idiom of the Jew, it means nothing more than a goodly person. As far as the Messiah is concerned, we say he was a Messiah, and Messiah doesn't mean God. Because God had Messiahs also by their tongues, in the Bible. You find this word Messiah in Hebrew, you apply it for Cyrus, a pagan. In the book of Isaiah, God says, it is I who have surnamed thee, that though thou hast not known me, means you, a pagan, a mushrik, although you don't know me, I still call you Messiah. But the Christians have translated the word Messiah to anointed. See, wherever it suits them, they retain the word Messiah as Messiah. Whenever it suits them, they translate it as Christ. And whenever it suits them, they translate it as anointed. And you'll find this word Messiah applied to pots and pans and horns and everything. It's here in this book of mine. Christ in Islam. If you like, you can check it up. Dozens of places in the Bible where anything and everything is described as Christ Messiah but in your translations the translators have deceived the people by changing instead of retaining the word Messiah as Messiah they would put the word anointed so it, you think it's something else but in the original it's Messiah and the Greek it is Christos uh, what was the second question Psalm oh Psalms yes now this prophecy if it is applied to Jesus, before he was born, this prophecy was made, that come, I will make you to sit on my right hand and make your enemies your footstool. Look, it never happened. Who are his enemies? Who are the enemies of Jesus? Anybody will tell you, the Jews. And they are strutting around in the Middle East, giving endless trouble to my people. They're making the American dog to wag, you know, the tail. The Israel is the tail and America is the dog. And whichever the tail wants, the American dog wags, moves around. It's a mighty power. Six million Jews are dictating what to do in the Middle East. That enemy of Jesus, look, where are they? Where is Jesus? Sitting on the right hand of God. Doing what? Waiting. For what? To make his enemy's footstool. Two thousand years. You get a hot pants, you know, you sit down one place. I'm sure some people sitting there now getting hot pants already. Two thousand years the poor man is sitting and waiting. For what? His enemies to be made his footstool. I said, look, it doesn't apply to Jesus. It doesn't. Can't. Otherwise, it's a very pitiful sight. You, you agree, two thousand years a man is waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool and they're still strutting around in the world. Pitiful. 